long uh, on a test, this would be a multi-part problem. But it illustrates a lot of points. This is a great one to do. This will also do take out a couple topics at the same time. All right. Okay, part A. For this one molar HF, do you expect the pH to be greater than or less than 7? Okay, uh, less than 7 because it's an acid, HF. So it might not be crazy small, so it won't be around 0, but it'll be, uh, you know, less than 7 for sure. B. Okay, kind of the pH of the solution. Okay, what kind of acid is this? So, yes or no to ice table? Yes. Okay, so let's write, to do an ice table, you need to write out the reaction. This is called the general reaction for an acid. Uh, somebody was asking me before, it seems like there's almost infinite number of reactions. There's really two categories that you see the most in class. One is this one, the generals. So the general reaction for an acid or base, I put in one category. Okay. When I get to the other type of reactions that we'll see a lot, I'll point it out. Okay, so ice table, because it's a weak acid, this is the way to solve it. Uh, I know it's one molar, I know water, zero, and zero. By the way, on the exam, I'll likely ask you for state symbols if I have you write the reaction as a particular question. Uh, which one of these is not aqueous? Water. Yeah, water. The rest are aqueous. Okay, so if you did have to fill in the state symbols, that's what it would be. Shifts to the right towards the zero, uh, or Q is zero, so it shifts right. So if I write now, hey, I'm going to hit the equilibrium expression, K, A, I'll just write it out for fun, is the products over the reactants. I don't include H2O in that scenario. So K, A, I have to look up, it would be on the back of the exam in the table. Uh, this would be 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 4. And that equals X squared over 1.0 minus X. Oops. There we go. Okay. Now I guess we're going to deal with the assumption now too. So so many of your subtopics we're dealing with. This is a classic. Weak, part B here is a classic weak acid titration problem. All right, by the way, this is also a classic wrong answer of mine in the case that in this one, uh, you don't have to do all these parts in order. So this is one, I didn't have to do A before I did B, for example. And you'll see that, no, B. these are, not all of them, but a lot of these are independent questions. They're just related to HF. Okay. So I'm going to make an assumption. First, let's double check if I can make the assumption. You want to check L over K, or 1 over 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 4. And ask myself, is that greater than 100? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, that's definitely greater than 100. My assumption will work. I'm going to cross out this X here. So this is going to turn out to be uh, X will equal 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 4 times 1, and I'm taking the square root of that. So that was my x value. I got 0.0257 for my x value. Now I have to look at my ice table and see what's, why is that interesting. Well, x here is this x here, which is the H3O plus concentration. And that's what it should be for weak acid. So this is H3O plus. So my pH is negative log of H0 plus or 0 0.257. Uh, and this is 1.59. <coughs> okay, so that's what we expected in the acid regime. There we go. Uh, we, yeah, that would be good for that one. So that's part A. Uh, part B now of this. No, we did be. C. A second solution take, contains 1.5 molar KF and the 1.5 molar. <laughs> so, 
If I add now kf, do I expect the second solution to have a greater, equal, or less than the pH of the first? I, it would be greater. Yeah. What's M over K in part B? That's my check to make sure I can do that assumption. M is the molarity, which was given in one. K is K. Now this also works for bases, so it could be the molarity of the base divided by KZ. Whatever. But this is a double check. Or it could be any concentration divided by this K. If it's set up like this, yes. Do you lose points if you don't do the assumption? No, you can do the quadratic formula, that's fine. Uh, I usually don't ask you to verify the assumption, but if I do, you have to. So if I don't clarify whether you have to verify, that's fine. But I want to see all the rest of your work. So for example, this in blue brown does not have to be written on the test. Everything else, it does. Okay. Unless I ask you specifically, hey, verify your assumption or something like that, I want to see this back. Or the percent ionization that I want to do. Okay, I think I'm doing part C. Uh, we decided that when I add KF, the pH is going to go up. Why is that? KF is a base. How did you know that? Yeah, K plus is neutral. F minus is the base. Okay, this is also in what category of problems? Part uh, C. I'm looking for salt. It's related to Le Chatelier. It's in chapter 16. It's related to buffers as well. Common ion effect. I add F minus, which is the common ion. That's going to shift the reaction to the lab. It'll decrease H to a plus concentration in this case, this pH. So, the one who asked about the common ion, part C and D are actually common ion problems, and at the same time they're buffers. So common ions are typically buffer problems. I, I actually can't think of a scenario where a common ion is not a buffer. It could be, but I can't do it before. Okay, so let's do part, uh, so part C was just to be explicit here. C, it will increase the pH. Now let's do part D. Part D is what is the pH of that solution? So let me rewrite uh, the numbers down for you if you didn't get it. Uh, for part D, we have a 1.0 molar uh, HF plus we have 1.5 molar KF. Okay, so this is a common ion problem. The common ion is uh, the F. What do I do with the K in this problem? Totally ignore it because it's a spectator ion, or in other words, it's neutral. See it? It's not relevant to our problem. What equation will I use to solve this problem? Okay, this one. I'm hoping this is what you were mumbling. <laughs> if you didn't, uh, I'm sorry, you weren't correct. But you better read for it now than on the exam. The Henderson Hasselbach. I know I can use this because it's a buffer. So I have the weak acid and its conjugate. So I have HF and F minus. Those are conjugates of each other. So they're buffers. I can use the Henderson Hasselbach, which is a buffer equation. Uh, so they have to be conjugates, they have to be weak, and approximately the same molarity within a factor of 10. So it's reasonable, there are similar molarities, this equation will work. This is a shortcut of what? Ice pick, shortcut of the ice pick. Okay, pKa, that's the negative log of the Ka. I have plus the log of the base of the acid. Negative log of the K was given in the previous part. Uh, 6.6 times 10 to the minus 4 plus the log of the base concentration. What number goes in the numerator? 
the base, which is true, what number? 1.5 and 1 would have to go here. So the base over the acid, 1.5 over 1. This turns out to be 3.36. What was the answer to the previous part? 1.59. So when I added the base, the pH went up. That's what we expected. So this worked exactly as we hoped. The pH went up. I have now generated a buffer. Okay, let's look at part E now. Part E says, uh, after adding 0.2 molars of HCl, uh, really to the second solution, will the pH increase, decrease, or stay the same? So if I add this uh, HCl, do you expect the pH to go up or down? Down, because it's an acid. Is it going to go down a lot or a little? Why little? Not because I'm adding it. Because I'm adding it to a buffer. Yeah. So because I'm adding HCl, doesn't matter what it's from, to a buffer, it's going to make a little change because buffers, by definition, resist pH change. Okay, so let me write some of this out here. E, here's my buffer. It's HF uh, and it's F minus. I am adding to this solution, I'm adding HCl. Now, uh, I need to decide HCl is going to react with what part of the buffer? The acid or the base? The base. So, uh, this one is going to react with that one. That's key. And okay, that is crucial to figure out. Now involves another type of reaction. So remember a moment earlier we saw part B had the general reaction. In that case the general reaction for acid. Now we're going to have a different type of reaction. It's going to be acid-base reaction. So all reactions really in this class will fall in one of those two categories. So all you do for this part is you write F minus plus, uh, let me think about H, or let's all think about HCl for a second. What am I going to do with the CL? I'm going to ignore it because, yeah, it's a neutral. It's a spectator ion. So you notice in this class, we don't really write H+, plus, we write, yeah, H3O+. Plus. It's the same thing. So now you're going to see the second reaction, which is these two things reacting together. So just write them down. Now, F minus will turn into HF. H3O plus will turn into yeah, water, H2O. This is the second type of reaction where you just have a generic acid plus a generic base. And so you have to think which one's the base. You would have to figure out this one. You have to put an H on it. Then you have to figure out which one's the acid. Oh, it's this one. You have to take an H off of it. That's how you write the reaction. So this is a whole category of reactions. These two could be totally different, the reactants, but you do the same thing. You take an acid off of, uh, you take a hydrogen off the acid and put it on the base. Okay. Uh, later we might write another one as well, but that's a generic reaction. I wrote this with a single arrow forward. Why is that? I have a strong here, so that makes it go forward. 100%. A strong in the reactants makes it go forward 100%. So K is large or small for this reaction? Large, because it goes forward. What's favorite, products or reactants? The products, yeah. Okay, so now you write your numbers underneath. F minus was up here 1.5 from the previous part of the problem. Uh, H3O plus, whoa, what was that? And this is molar. H3O plus was 0.2. That's given in the problem. That's in units of moles. HF was 1.0. That's given in the question. Any confusion about where I got these numbers? The first one? First one, 1.5. That's the molarity of KF. So it's the molarity of F minus. Okay. All right. Okay, 
Uh, first of all, I have different units. That's one problem. Let's deal with that in a second. What's the bigger problem? I need a zero on the unfavored side. You already told me the products are favored, so I need a zero with the reactants. I don't have one, so before I do equilibrium, I must do what's called stoichiometry. So first, you change to what unit? Moles. Now this solution is how many meters? Uh, Adding to two liters of the second solution. Yeah. So uh, this is. I have to go 1.5 times two liters. It turns out to be three moles. This is 0.2 moles. And here I have to do 1.0 times 2 liters, and that's 2 moles. Okay, so I'm changing them all to the same units. So I geometry, I always prefer moles, just like in Chem 2A. Uh, now, I find the smallest number. That's called my limiting reactant. So find the smallest number, that's 0.2. It'll usually be the number that you add to the buffer. So, 0.2. I'm going to subtract that from the reactants, and I'm going to add it to the products. Why am I ignoring water? Liquid. Who cares about that garbage? Okay, so, 2.8. This is 0. And this is uh, 1 point. Oh, no. 2.2. Okay, all units of moles. Could I go to an ice table now? Or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I can. What about? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, what did I want to find out? I wanted to find out the pH. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Okay. What am I going to do to find the pH now? Yeah, I can. I could use the ice table if I wanted to, and this would be the highlight of the ice table. But let's make our life easier and use the henderson Hasselbach because I have a buffer. <coughs> PK is the negative log of the KA. Okay, the base is what number? What number goes in the numerator? 2.8. Right here, F minus, and the acid is 2.2. Do I need to change that to uh, molarity? I don't, because it's a ratio. So even if I divided by 2 liters, it would be the same, on, same ratio. OK, this turned out to be uh, 3.28. Is that the kind of answer I expected? Yeah, the previous answer was 3.36. This is slightly smaller because I added an acid. So it went down a little, not a lot because of, it's a buffer. Oh, was that part E or that by the way? That was really part F. OK. Uh, let, uh, yes, question about this? Yeah. What part? D. Got it. Okay. I didn't do stoichiometry in part D. There's a couple ways I can explain that. One is, when I'm not adding anything to the buffer, stoichiometry is irrelevant because I won't have an equation like this. I'm adding nothing to the buffer. So really, my reaction is this. This is for part B again. Uh, when I don't have anything, it's just water. And then you would go, oh, let's see, what is it? Uh, 1, 1.5, and 0. And you'd ask yourself, is that the ion? Do I have a zero on the unfavored side of it? Without reaction. 
Which side is not a favorite side? Right or left? The right, because, so we got a small. So this one, I didn't need to destroy geometry. I didn't go through this because I didn't add anything to the buffer, so I knew what would happen. So geometry will only happen when you add something to the buffer. Yes? How do I know what's the buffer? Okay, let's do a little bit of that, and we're finished with this problem. Again, you need something that's weak and it's conjugate together in a solution. So uh, there's plenty of possibilities. This buffer, uh, weak acid and it's conjugate, buffer. Uh, what's another one? HClO and ClO minus. Anything that's conjugate. So one has an H, the other one is missing one of those H's. So that's it. Is that okay? So these are both conjugates of each other. Because one's acid, the other's a conjugate. These that are ions could have a counter ion. So for example, this one could be written as KNO2. But K is a spectator ion, so it doesn't matter. Or this one could be written as whatever you want to add to it. LiClO. Li is a spectator. So all the ions could have a counter ion or a spectator ion attached to it. It doesn't change the molecule. Again, a buffer or something, one of them has more H's than the other, typically. Is the way to it. And specifically, one more H. Anything else about buffers? Yeah. How do we know if it's a spectator? It's a conjugate of a straw. So uh, if you, whether or not you have the reader with you, look later. And this time, moving over to page uh, chapter 15. Uh, here we go. Here's all the conjugates of the straws. Remember the strong acid base table? That's page 73. The strong acid, strong base table, I'll find it, is this one. So I took off of the acids, I took off an H. The bases, I'm taking off the OHs. And that's this. Is that okay? These are all spectators. Cool? All conjugates of strongs are neutral, putting them in the spectator category. So you got to know this table, and by default, then you'll know this one. Okay, let's see what we just covered. Uh, we just did buffers, we did common ion, I did the weak acid, I did an ice table, I did the assumption. Uh, KEQ, I could do another one of those. Okay, not bad, I like that problem. Let's do percent ionization next. <laughs> Because I will just go back to part A of uh, part B of the previous problem for percent ionization. For part B of the previous problem, oh, any lingering questions, by the way? Yes. Oh, okay. Rewind, everybody. Never mind this for a second. We had a question about buffers. In some rare circumstances, when we give you molarities, for example, uh, something like that, and uh, Uh, yeah, yeah, probably. That's your Okay, this doesn't look like a buffer because these are not conjugates whatsoever. Okay? Uh, they're totally different molecules. But if you write it out, because I have a strong, I'm thinking of this. I have a strong. Write this out. KF, which is really just, what should I write? Yeah, I just have minus K as a spectator. Plus HCl, you can have HCl, not whatever. This is 
be a problem. I uh, get HF plus Cl minus. So do you see how the base got a proton? The acid lost the proton? Cool. Okay, then I write these numbers down here. 2 for F minus and 1 for HCl. All right, this reaction goes forward 100% because strong acid right there. So this has zero initially. We're going to lose the smallest one, which is the limiting reactant, and gain it over here. Okay, if I look at this one and this one, those two right there, I have the conjugates, F minus and HF, which are together make a buffer. And so this solution, because it goes forward 100%, made a buffer when one didn't exist initially. But this happened so fast because of the strong acid that you generate a buffer almost instantaneously. And so now, yes, this solution is a buffer. This happens when you have a, a weak plus a strong. And the weak is uh, times to the concentration uh, of, how do you even write that, of this one. This is just regular concentration. So this concentration of the strong one is like half approximately of the weak one. It's going to make a lot. Is that kind of all right? It didn't turn out to be a sentence, but okay. I was going for a sentence and it didn't work out. If the weak is twice the concentration of the strong, that'll make a lot. Oh, and times two is just an approximate rule of thumb. It'll be times three and that's one.